And welcome to this talk called Framework Compass Chart. Why the fancy name? The fancy name is because Framework Compass Chart is a tool that we use in our company to help team to choose other tools. Okay, so it's kind of a meta tool. Okay, and uh, this talk will not have any kind of code, so it's quite hard to me to uh, to explain these things because uh, usually I use code to explain things. A code, you know, it's easy. You read the code, you should understand it without my words. So it's quite hard for me. Uh, but it's a, a talk without code. But I think it's a quite important topic for the JavaScript community. Why is that? Do you ever ask this question? Do you feel the JavaScript fatigue? Do you know what JavaScript fatigue is? Is when you know you start learning Angular, and then they say. No, React is a good thing. You start, start, you start studying React, and they say Vue is a new thing. OK, you start using Webpack, and they say Parcel is the new thing, and so on. OK, that's the expression called JavaScript fatigue. It's, uh, it's born from uh, a post from uh, two years ago, I think, or something like that. But I don't think that it's really a problem. I see that more like, sorry? more like of an opportunity. I really, really enjoy to, to study new things to understand why a framework has six, why Redux has been invented, why React has been invented. Behind every framework, there is a, some kind of decisions. And I want to understand what are the real meaning of that tool. But behind any opportunity, there is a challenge. It's always like that. If you see an opportunity, it's because you see a challenge. And what is the challenge? In this case, it should choose the right framework. OK, I should choose Webpack, Parcel. I should choose React, Angular, and so on. But it's, uh, this is the real challenge. You have to choose the right framework to solve a problem. I don't think that this is the real challenge, because there is no real solution to this problem. I don't think that your project will fail if you choose Angular or if you choose React, OK? It's not the point. The point is to choose a good framework in a right way. The point is not just in the solution, but in the process to that solution. What I'm saying is that to choose a framework is a, a decision-making problem, OK? So we are not talking about actual code, but we are talking about the decision that we make before starting coding. Because usually our first commit is npm install react. But behind that command, there is a lot of thinking behind. Your team talk about it, usually. Or, or at, last, at least I hope. The last, co the last consultancy that I have when I asked to the team, why you choose React? Because they have a, a lot of performance problem because they didn't know React at all. So I asked, why you choose it, because you, it's obvious that you don't know it. And they said, eh, but our boss tell us to use React. And I said, OK, fine. It's your boss, a developer. No. OK. OK, we have a problem. That, yes, it's, but it's not a code problem. It's an, another kind of problem. So go on. But OK. But you understand that it's a decision problem right now. So. The point is, what kind of problem is to choose a framework? OK? Before answering this question, let's try to understand how can we, um, how can I say, categorize problems. The first category is the simplistic problems. There is only one answer. Who is the president of the United States? There is only one answer, and it's quite easy to answer. OK? Then we have the deterministic problem. We have one answer possible, but you need, you need analysis or a formula to answer it. A nice example is the area of the circle. It's easy, but you need to know the formula. Without analysis or without the formula, you can't answer this problem. OK, let's go over. Random problems. Different answers are possible, but the option can all be identified. For example, 
which of the candidates will win the elections. Okay, you understand how we are getting harder and harder problems. Now, right now we know which are the candidates, so we know the possible solutions, but who will win the elections? No, no one probably put a coin on Trump and he wins. So I understand it's quite an hard problem to understand. At last, the most difficult problem in the terminate. Different answer, but they are too complicated to list. So we don't even know all the possible answer. For example, how will internet affect our retail sales over the next five years? There are probably a million of solutions to this problem and we can't even understand how, much solution, how many solutions we have on the table. And that is uh, quite an, uh, an interesting thing. If you put simplistic, deterministic, random, indeterminate, indeterminate in a row, you see that the role of data, it's important for simplistic and deterministic. And the role of judgment is not important in this case. Why? Because you don't need judgment to say what is the area of the circle. You don't need any kind of, you know, I think that the area of the circle is this, or I think that the area of the circle is this one. No, it's a formula. So there is no judgment in a formula. But when you go to random or indeterminate, the two factor will invert. So when you have a random problem and, and you have this situation, so you have a mix of judgment and data in the importance. This is quite interesting because if you think at the election, you, it's just not about the data. It's also about, about how we interpret the data. And when you go to indeterminate process, the things completely flip because you don't have enough data to understand all the possible solution. Fortunately, it's not an indeterminate problem to choose a framework. It's a random problem. So at least we have all the possible solutions on a table. Okay, in the JavaScript community, we have a lot of options, but we can list them all, okay? Okay, so we know that, that choose a framework is a mix of data and judgment. But the point is, what data do we need? If you need to choose a framework, what data you will keep in consideration? I, we thought about it a lot in our team. And usually we, you know, we concentrate on what the software has to do, okay? We usually use user stories, so we think, okay, the user should, I want, as a user I want to log in, as a user I want to do that, and so on. But the point is, there is something more important in my opinion to understand how to choose a framework. And there are their non-functional requirements. What is a non-functional requirement? If a functional requirement is something that describes what a software should do, as a user, I want to log in. It's what a software has to do. Non-functional requirement is something, is, this is just a non-comprehensive list. Do you have response enough? You have so you have sustainability, testability, transparency, usability. These things that in, the, in England are also called elities, you know, to not say non-functional requirement all the time. These things describe how a software should work. And you understand that is a very, very hidden specification sometimes, because if I say to you, I use, as a user, I want to log in. And if I say, as a user, I want to log in in less than 50 milliseconds. You understand that is a completely different approach to the problem. The point is that usually when you talk with a client, you never use any of these words. Because the client doesn't know about performance, doesn't know about usability most of the time. So here comes the tool, the framework compass chart. The framework compass chart is a tool to add, that helps you to visualize the most important non-functional requirement of your project. How it works. 
Take your team, I mean the, the tech team, and also the stakeholder, also UX designer, UI designer, uh, the clients, the um, Q&A, everyone in the, your team. Put everyone in a room and try to decide the five most important non-functional requirements from that list. Okay, that list is not comprehensive, but you can find uh, a list of Wikipedia or in some book you can find no, a very, very complete list of non-functional requirements. There are, there are at least, I think, 100, okay? So try to make your team to choose five important non-functional requirements and put them on the chart. This is, this is real data that I have done with a, a client some months ago. So we decided that testability, evolvability, performances, community, and velocity are the five most important things that we need to keep in consideration when deciding the next framework for their project. By the way, they choose React, okay? So, okay, now you have to fill the chart. This is a very, very funny part, usually, because uh, the tech team and the, you know, the project manager, they have completely different approach to fill the chart, okay? Uh, what I usually do is something like planning poker. Okay, I, uh, everyone just states a number, one to five, and then, then I let people talk the most, the most high point and the lower point, okay, until they all agree on a number. This thing could last an hour. I would say that, okay? It's not an easy, an easy thing to facilitate, but it's very, very, it's very, very important. At last, we have something like that. Uh, you know, there is no rule when you fill the chart, there is no rule, you, know, you don't have a maximum amount of points, okay? But you know, if you put five on every corner, you are asking for the perfect framework, and the perfect framework does not exist. So what I suggest, when I help team do that is, if you put a two four and, a, and one five, probably you should put a one or a two. Because if you want evolvability, you should sacrifice something else. Or you are looking for a perfect solution that doesn't, not, does not exist. So this tool is quite not useful. So you have this situation. And, and what you have to do with that? This is the why this is called compass chart. Because your tech team, you should do this chart as a compass when choosing the framework. What I mean is, uh, we don't have, for example, take this example. If someone says, I prefer React because it's more performant than Angular. I don't even, I don't even know if it's true or not. But the point is, when I, when I hear this thing, I say, it's not important. Let's talk about evolvability. Is Angular better than React when we talk about evolvability of the software? Because, because we said that it's a quite important point. Who has the better community, Angular or React? Of course, they are not exactly, you know, truth. They are opinion. But you are guiding the opinion on the important things about your project, okay? Uh, can, you, can, you, can I answer later? Okay. Okay, the talk is finished. This is kind of references. You have uh, two books about decision making. You have a post on Medium about this, um, you know, this tool that I wrote some time ago. And also have a very, very nice video of a girl called Guian from Belgium that talk about decision making in software. This is very, very interesting. Before I quit, I have one last thing that I want to give you. It's uh, a news. This is the first, the first time that I talk about this thing outside of Italy. And this is the framework class movement. This is a movement of people that I, we are creating right now with uh, my colleagues and also other people around Europe. And it's a group of people interested in uh, working with our frameworks. How it takes to create a completely frameworkless rendering engine today, for example, and also in how to decide the right framework for the right project. It's a, uh, it's a movement that talk about framework 
without the, you know, the truth that is you should always use a framework. We keep a no framework option in mind every time. I am Francesco Scazzullo, I come from Italy. Uh, I work for Extrategy, a remote company in Italy about, um, we are a very, very vertical front-end development agency. You can find all this is on my contacts. You can find, you can write me on Twitter. My direct messages are open. So if you have any question, you can contact me when you want. These slides are on slides.com slash Francesco Strazzullo. I will send it to you an email. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.